Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to be here today. So our today's video is based on derivatives. Starting off, have you ever heard of the term derivative? Well, the answer for this is that it's a fundamental tool of calculus. And what makes it so unique is the fact that this tool can compute the change of a function at any point. However, in calculus, this concept is equally important as integral, which it's the reverse of derivative, and that is also called antiderivative. The derivative of a function is one of the basic concepts of calculus in mathematics. Together with the integral, derivative covers the central place in calculus. So the inverse operation for differentiation is known as in this topic. Surely, we will discuss about the derivative formula with the examples in this video, but first, let us begin this important learning integration. The derivative of a function at a given point characterizes the rate of change of the function at that point. So, we can estimate the rate of change by doing the calculation of the ratio of change of the function delta y with respect to the change of the independent variable, which is the delta x. So in the definition of the derivative, the limit value of this ratio is considered as delta x to zero. Now to know more about the rules and explanation, here's our beloved friend Kirk. Hi, my name is Kirk Chandler and I'll be covering lots of the, the derivatives in this section. So, for starters, what are derivatives? Derivatives are representations of a function we're deriving from. So they're just It's a simple answer. And for, for me to define a derivative, as my colleague has previously mentioned, we have to understand its notations. And there are various forms of notations. The current ones that we have studied, or the standard versions we have studied, are fx, y, and any other function that may come in, as in like, x squared plus 1 or any sort of function similar to that and we often refer to them as the prime function or the derivative of a function there are other variants of the function as well such as gx or g, g prime of x or s and t for time and speed or distance we use those to calculate other instantaneous changes in our environment and derivatives are used as well for not only instantaneous changes or changes over time in a graph, but in um in many other places such as in temperature, height, coverage of mild of um co yeah distance covered, so on and so forth. Now, in this part, we'll cover its computation properties. There are two main ways we have discussed. One is by definition, and the other one is by power rule. As you can see, by definition, we can distribute each one of the functions to solve them, or we can do an easier one where we can solve it directly. Where fx is given, we substitute it in and plug in the coordinates. Each on its own is zero. So first one, example, fx equals 5x minus 4. We write the fun we write the limit itself again and substitute 5 5 into, what's this, 5x, and then the other one for h plus h, you move 5x down, so 5 parentheses x plus h minus 4. Then basic algebra, cancel, then you're left with 5h, cancel h's, and you're left with 5. Next one, power rule. So in power rule, this, this, it, uh, the power rule states that f prime of x will always equal to zx n where n does not equal zero so what does this mean it means that the sub so the superscript can can never be zero and in order to do so we have to move it down and subtract it by one and there's a um, there's an example for this it's fx equals 4x subscript 4 plus 2x power 3 minus x squared plus 4x minus 1. Now, 
the pro the way we're gonna solve this is or the answer rather is 16 x cubed plus 6 squared plus 2 x plus 4 how do we do this the sub the superscript 4 on the first function goes down to the 4 and multiplies itself it's 16 and the superscript gets subtracted by 1 and they are always they are always denoted individually rather than the whole function itself <sighs> next up it's properties the properties we will be covering in this part is sum difference product quotient constant chain and constant multiple for, so for the sum rule or in most rules really we're technically just breaking them apart and then depending on the rule we're either adding subtracting multiplying or dividing those are the four the common rules that we we have taken in class as you can see in the example they're technically all similar except for the product and quotient rule which i'll be covering the product rule states that for f for us to define the pro, uh, for us to use it we have to multiply the f prime with the secondary function which is let's say gx and then add it with the first function of the prime of the second function. So we, in the example, 5x minus 9 cubed times 8 plus x squared. So to solve it, it would be 5, 5 times 23 squared times, or you could put brackets, 8 plus x squared. So this is the reference of the first prime times the second function and then plus that with the, um, the first function and it's and its secondary prime then so in this case it would be 5x minus 9 cubed sorry times 2x and for the quotient rule it's a bit different so we have on the first part it's um it's about it's, it's the same as the product rule However, underneath it, we have to divide squared of the secondary function. So, what you're seeing here is is um, is, um is a fraction where f x or the first part of the function will be up and the second one will be down. So let's take this example: x squared divided by three x minus one. What do we do? First, we find the derivatives of each one. Then we plug it into our formula. Most people would use a method called Lodi high and it is true, it might be easier to remember, but I'd stick to the original notation. It's as that on its own will help you do other things such as the product rule. All you just have to do is switch them out a little bit. So in this case it would be gx times f prime minus uh, fx over g prime or sorry multiplied by g prime then divided by gx squared so back to the back to the example we'll take 3x as our gx from the from the bottom and times it with the prime of the first one which is 2x and put those all in parentheses and minus the the first function <coughs> sorry x squared then plug it in with another parentheses and multiply it by 3 uh, 3 sorry yeah 3 because it's the derivative of gx or the second one then all over 3 minus 1 squared now for the la for the last three these are co the chain rule is a bit different it's not really a common rule but it is necessary so for this it states that d dy over dx will equal to f parentheses g of x or in this case it would be f prime of g gx times the prime of gx and in simpler terms the function consists of two parts one outside and one inside we separate them into their primes or their derivatives and then plug them as such so which is the last variant it's 
the f prime times gx or the secondary function then it will times itself with its prime so <coughs> dy over dx 5x plus 3 over 4 or parentheses 4 to do this move 4 to the other side so 4 will go down then it, since it's a superscript similar to the power rule minus 1 so it would be 4 parentheses 5x plus 3 and then we have to derive them so for the secondary function which is 5x plus 3 to use a constant become 0 5x will become 5 then as such you leave it like that that is the whole that is the whole answer then the constant multiple rule so there are two ways of going with this Con the, we'll go over the simple one constant rule any constant or real numbers let's say in this case without any variable such as x will turn into zero that's it that's the only thing you need to know even e even pi any of those will turn into zero constant multiple on the other hand is a bit different where const a constant with a function will be multiplied with the prime and it's written there in the formula in this case we'll take the example 3 parentheses x5 uh sorry yeah x over 5 and then to do this we'll have to move down the sub superscript 5 down and subtract it so it would be 5x over 4 or power 4 then the two the two the two constants outside would multiply them into 15 the superscript stays the same so it would be 15x4 that is all i'm passing it over to navid hello my name is navid umid sadiki um, i'm going to talk about uh, higher order derivatives let's start with this uh, section with the following function here is the question by this point we should be able to differentiate this function without any problems doing this we get this function now this is a function and it can be differentiated here is the notation that we will use for the as well as the derivative this is called the second derivative and fx is now called the first derivative again this is a function so we differentiate it again this will be called the third derivative here is that derivative as well as the notation for the third derivative continuing we can differentiate again this is called oddly enough the fourth derivative we are also going to be changing notation at this point we can keep adding on primes but that will get cumbersome after a while this progress can continue but notice that we will get zero for all derivatives after this point this set of derivative leads us to following fact about differentiation now let's get started to the solving a question example find the derivative of fx equals 3x plus 1 power of 5 and now let's go to the solution in this example there is a fr uh, function 3x plus 1 that is being t been taken to the fifth power so there are two pieces the 3x plus 1 the inside fr function and the taking that to the fifth power the, the outside function you know that by the power rule that the derivative of, of x power of 5 is 5x power of 4 so cover that 3x plus 1 and pretend that it's an x for a minute the only deal is that you will have to pay a penalty since it was actually not just an x you have to multi multiply by the derivative of the x 3x plus 1 
Okay, so here are the final answer and the solving. Thanks guys, I hope you understand this and so on. And now we will go to Mehdi for real life stages. As now, as our colleagues have explained and talked about the actual meaning and the actual solving of derivatives, let's talk about the relations between economics and derivative itself. So, frankly speaking, nowadays the decision making in economics has become more mathematical. Statistical and mathematical principles that are always applied in making decisions regarding possible gain or loss in investment. Confronted with massive statistical data, dependent on lots of variables, there was a need of some tool that could assist the analysts. Here, calculus proved to be beneficial. It implemented the derivative concepts to predict the results of different investment possibilities. So, ultimately, this enabled the analyst to select the one possibility that might prove to be productive in terms of profitability. Now, at the end, I hope this has helped you to understand and apply the calculus concepts in practical fields and how to solve the actual questions about derivatives. Thank you.